So yeah, chat it's... GPT, we just came off of Latinos in clinical research. Uh, first webinar of the year. So if you're not on Latinos in clinical research, link is underneath this video. Go subscribe. You don't need to be Latino. All backgrounds. Welcome. I'm not Latino. I'm and in it's it. free. And it's free. Um, speaking of something else that's free, okay, something that came up in the, in this discussion that we need to talk about just a little. We don't want to go too long on this one. Chat GPT. Monica's a huge fan. I'm it's I'm starting to see like where AI is going to play a role, huge role in drug discovery. Ashley, you were saying in the webinar about job candidates, like people are already in research using it to improve their skills. Yeah. How how can you do this? So chat GCP is like um you know how they say that it's just well if you've researched it lately, it's just growing and growing and growing. So the more questions it gets asked, the deeper it has to go, the more resources and information it extracts and pulls so that it learns and gets bigger. So say you ask a question this week, by next week, so many more questions have been asked, it's gonna know that much more information, right? So if you let's say are specialized in oncology and you've been doing that for the longest time and you're wanting to maneuver out into a different therapeutic area, that's just as you know, um as difficult to get into, right? Because more than likely it probably pays better, et cetera, but you don't have any of that exposure. This is a great place for you to come in and search about that particular therapeutic area and soak in all that knowledge, right? Learn about it. That's it's, I'm sure it has access to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of books, right? All that information kind of jumbled into one huge centered section, right? You can ask questions like, um, if you want to go into CNS, right? Uh, what do you know in a three-page, five-page summary about CNS and research that is the most important thing to know? It mm -hmm. accumulates. I asked it already. Like, what you are did? some hot? Yeah, what are some hot areas of research? And it gave me monoclonal antibodies, mRNA. So it's already. I'm already using it for stuff like that. Um, but like, you're you're bringing a good point when you breaking it down to a job seeker you know you can actually get a lot of information not only on the position and the responsibilities you know those job boards we talk about monica with you know job responsibilities i mean now you can just ask chat gpt like what is assisting with patient recruitment and it's going to tell you um, now it tells you like from an academic standpoint still it doesn't this is why you still need to watch our videos guys like um, it's going to tell, like, we tell you, like, the real stuff you need to know. So we're still better than, I would say, the AI for now. But when it comes to technical knowledge, not soft skills, it doesn't do good yet with, like, soft skills, like how to position yourself for this job or how to do well in this interview. But, like, technical skills, like hard science, like what is uh, CRA and, and what do they do and what is the delegation of authorities log? Um, it's going to do pretty good if you don't know anything about that. And same thing with the therapeutic indications. So Monica, you're a fan of it as well. Yeah, it give you it give you the basics, right? It's not going to go in depth yet because it doesn't have all the information. I have been testing it too, <laughs> like asking for specific processes. And yes, it definitely give you the like the 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 basic information so that should prepare you for. Uh, an interview, right? But but if you want to go more in, more in depth, obviously it's gonna be a different. You're gonna have to to study much more. But but um, to give you at least um, the essence of the perspective, initial perspective, that's that's great. And I yeah. think and, it's and, like it's it goes in line with what I've been telling. Like if you know you're gonna go get interviewed by PPD, for example, it doesn't hurt to do some like investigating on who PPD is, what they do. And this is something it can do for you, chat GPT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I and, and even, even uh, um, create, I mean, like even helping you to send even nicer emails. Like I just write an email and ask uh, the, the chat GPT to, to rewrite it in a more polite way. 
And wow. oh my gosh, I gotta uh, use that. I gotta blow use that. my mind. I just love that. I gotta that. use that because my one yeah. sentence replies is getting people. <laughs> yeah. and, and it and it takes me like less than one minute. Mm -hmm. So I I actually was thinking if if the if if it does like a like a scan and then you give you the whole thing but it's not it's not there yet <laughs> yeah i think the, uh, yet, but... the good thing to make mention of is kind of like um you know when you go to google and you ask a question like let's say for example oh you know what does it mean when i have a stomach ache or my stomach hurts and then you get webmd and all these other crazy resources going to the most extreme sense like ends right so understand that ChatGPT is taking a variant, a variation of all these resources. So like it's still biased. It's still taking it from multiple different types of biases and kind of giving you an average range and or factual information from academia coming from all ends. So again, just the more that it knows and the more that it grows, um, start it starts to becoming way more proficient and accurate. So as of right now, when you're using it for like Dan said, like soft skills and things like that, it's not as refined at the moment. It really, and it probably will be in the next year to two years. I I think with the way that it's going and just how algorithms work with AI, it, especially the fact that I think it was um, I think it was not it wasn't founded by Elon, but it's one of his no, no, no. venture capitalist uh, companies. But anyways, yeah. that's, that's uh, Microsoft. Microsoft too. Microsoft too. Yeah. So yeah. So it's just kind of you know you know that there's a lot of funds yeah. going into that. A lot of science backing it to really mm -hmm. kind of gain more traction so for example it, it it'll know like a1c for diabetes and it will know like gfr for renal impairment and it'll give you like how all those things relate but if you ask it like what do sites have problems with it gets stuck i've tried and it gets stuck what do clinical research sites have problems with it gets into like the quality of doing the studies but really it's patient recruitment it's getting studies it doesn't know that stuff yet but it's, yeah, I think it's basic. It's, yeah. it's, it's more basic. Yeah. I mean, obviously, for for deeper knowledge, you need I, to to truly do your your job, your 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 due diligence to to search more, to take a class tool. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I think tool. that it's that yeah, making it use utilizing it already as as a tool, like Dan was saying, like and Monica, like being more productive, amplifying your productivity, amplifying your presentation uh, uh, electro or e, e version of presentation, right? Those kinds of things are super, super important. So just because it's on the tech side doesn't mean that it can't transition over and assist you as a coordinator, assist you as a CRA, um, obviously in aspects that are not dealing with, you know, high level information or anything like that, but just stuff that helps you amplify your productivity is amazing. Yeah. Um, but definitely, I think on a therapeutic side area, because you come into an interview and you don't know anything about diabetes, you get a five to 10 page summary. You read that yeah. in a week's time frame. you're going to come in and you're going to know so much, right? So being smart with this technology, don't always go the old way, go into the new way, see, get a feel for it and make it work for you. Not only that, yeah. when, when it was, when I was using it, like I was looking up diabetes, like A1C, cause we have a diabetes study. And I would, it would tell me like about A1C and I would say, explain that in further detail. And it actually would, it would give you more information if you look into it. Yeah. Breaking it down. Yeah. And I'm sure you can, if you ask it, uh, break, break down the mechanics of um, the process of A1C in, in throughout the blood in fifth grade language. Mm, I didn't right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Think about it. Cause some, a lot of people, I mean, it's not so much about learning it the concept of learning it, it's like the jargon and the verbiage and breaking down for you to understand it so if you can actually already ask for that and they can it can produce that for you imagine like how far you could go with your learning how you could even go with training and teaching people through that type of learning right you can transition that as well i mean it goes on and on and on you just have to have that bigger picture thought process and yeah but i just i think it's it's really really great
Yeah, I love it. Yeah, you can even ask, for example, to rewrite the summary of your CV to make it even more appealing. I mean, or or, or to wow. correct the grammar or your CV because. Hey, but then they won't need Ashley. First, Wait a minute! No, 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 Any resources are good out there. Seriously, no, anybody? They still need Ashley because they don't. I mean, even if if it's rewrite, correct the grammar, and all of that, the grammar. Uh, I mean, the 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 important part you still need Ashley because it's so personalized. So it's just like it's the way you write things is it it can it can help it and put it in different ways that it makes it more appealing. Yeah. And and for example, if you are like me, an immigrant, I learned English by myself, so grammar was, you know, something that I learned yeah. within the time. This can help you to correct the grammar. Uh, in your CV, and it, that is so wow. important. And yeah. some organizations, yeah, mm -hmm. we know. Then remember that time that we got somebody that reached out to us and told us, or told us that they were upset because the somebody CVs what had a, a grammar errors, yeah. Yeah. and that happens to the majority of companies. If they receive mm -hmm. an, an a CV that has grammar errors, that's a uh, Big thing it's a so red flag. Sure that the reaching is it's nice. inexcusable so, now. It's free. Yeah. Yeah. So Grammarly. Yeah. <laughs> Grammarly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like it's totally fine. It there's tools out there. It's it's better. Like I I work with people because and I teach them the way I teach them so that they don't have to come back. Right. It's not like oh I'm only showing you this. Let me do it for you. People that do it for you, then yeah, they're they're honing their skills inwards. I don't, I want people to learn, right? So yes, this is good for your resume. Grammarly, if you guys don't know about Grammarly, use Grammarly, that's super good. There are aspects to your resumes, obviously that and how you're positioning and prioritizing based off on the role and stuff like that. But yeah, if you can find tools that help you, and this for is example, definitely example, you could say, hey, hey, chat GPT, I'm applying for a clinic or research coordinator job. Please give me uh, 10, skills or responsibilities of crcs that i could list on my resume and yeah. it will tell you i'm sure it will tell you i haven't done this but it will do it yeah. and you can do this for any any of the jobs like yeah the only thing i would say about that is because you don't know where it's extracting that information from that's my only concern with that part because if it's taking bit by bit from something then it might look like a copy and paste right so that's the only thing just being mindful of those kinds of things, but it's still extremely helpful because yeah, it's saving you time, energy, and potentially money sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, for sure. It's, or it's like a I, I'm tool. a, I'm a CTA clinical trial, administ clinical trial assistant, and I want to transition to a CRA, give me 10 transferable skills and it, it will probably find it for you guys. Oh yeah. Like this stuff yeah, is that good. For sure. Especially if you put your, I, th I don't know if you have an opportunity to upload your resume. I don't nah. know if, Okay, so at least not yeah. what I've used it for. It's just a chat box, but I think there's a paid version too. But I we've been just using the free version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely yeah. something to look up uh, as you guys are clinical research professionals or soon to be clinical research professionals. Definitely look this up. Um, it's helpful in so many so many ways. Um, definitely beneficial for sure. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Monica. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, share. Go follow both Ashley and Monica underneath here. And also I'll have a link to Latinos in Clinical Research and ChatGPT. Take care.